Welcome to the third edition of Adam's Mailbag from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. Well, we have quite a few comments, and I've probably waited a little too long to do this, but we'll take a uh, listen to your comments, I'll respond, and then I'll have a couple programming notes uh, for upcoming programs. We start with an email from Justine, who said, Hi, Adam. I just wanted to say that I really appreciate the work you're doing in putting out this podcast. I love the Melody Roundup shows. I keep trying to like the big band sound, but it will never compare to cowboy music in my book. Uh, Thanks again. Keep up the good work. Well, thanks so much, Justine, and uh, we will uh, definitely try and get some more uh, cowboy music into our Saturday night or Saturday-Sunday programs. Uh, On a similar note, Charlene says, uh, thanks for the National Barn Dance episode. I have never actually heard Eddie Peabody play, although I've heard the famous blooper connected with him. I must tell you that I do love your comments, even though your youth betrays you on occasion. Pat Buttram was best known as the great Gene Autry's first best friend. Has anyone ever looked at what the Nazis were putting out for their morale boosters? I think the comparison to U.S. radio broadcast would tell the tale. We had fun, songs in several styles, and Alka-Seltzer commercials while they had the clubfoot hypocrite and his master, the evil crazy man. Well, thanks, Charlene. Uh, In answer to what Pat Buttram is most famous for, I I guess it is a bit of an age thing. Uh, According to IMDb on the best known for category, they give the nod to Green Acres. But second place is uh, a Gene Autry, uh, Gene Autry show. So I guess he's known for both. And we have a comment from C. Patterson who talks about uh, our Man Behind the Gun episodes. I sailed in action in the 80s, and it surprises me that a lot of this is spot on. The Navy uses slang terminology that has been in use since the time of Nelson in the big sail ships, but the Navy holds on to traditions like an only child. Uh, Thank you for this series, Adam. It is so uh, interesting to hear that although things change, they stay the same in so many respects. Once again, thanks for all your hard work. Uh, And then uh, Joel emails, I'm enjoying your war podcast. One of the most poignant memoirs of the war era are the songs of the day. There are some that bring tears every time I hear them. I'll be home for Christmas, if only in my dreams. I'll walk alone. We'll meet again. When the lights go on again are some of the songs that capture the longing for peace and the return of loved ones from harm's way. It's hard to imagine that virtually every household had someone in the service, most at risk. You mentioned the arms uh, buildup prior to the U.S. entry in the war. I read a remarkable book recently that detailed how the U.S. turned on its industrial capacity to build tanks, planes, weapons, ammunition, ships, etc. in quantities uh, that astounded even our own people. It is called Freedom's Forge. I recommend it highly. It is an incredible story, and uh, it's available on Amazon. Uh, Thanks for your great uh, podcast. And, well, thank you so much uh, for sharing, Joel, and for the book recommendation. And Mike just offers a uh, comment regarding our Superman episode on December 30th. Poor Clark can't, uh, can't take a trick, can he? After searching for Atlantis, he stumbles over a latter-day version of the mystery of the Maurice Celeste. What can it mean? Well, it basically means the writers were mostly at this point going for escapism. There was a kind of mix on Superman of escapism and fighting the Nazis in very small ways generally home front and uh, fighting against the fifth column. All right, well, now I've got a few notes on the programming we're going to be playing over the next few months and just other uh, things to expect. In general, at this point, we're trying to use most of our programs from uh, radio broadcast in 1942 uh, into maybe mid, uh, even into late 1943, We're not trying to go through a straight chronological run-through of the war, but we're trying to keep things kind of within an era. Uh, There will be probably a pretty big exception to that next month. Next month is February, which is observed as Black History Month. 
And I know there's some uh, controversy about that, with many people feeling it's not quite appropriate. And uh, Morgan Freeman, uh, for one, uh, observing that I don't want a Black History Month. Black history is American history. And I can definitely appreciate the viewpoint. Uh, The big reason we're doing it is that so many schools and such observe it. So having something up on the net that people can listen to and that uh, tells important stories, I just I just think that overall it's going to be helpful in that regard. And there's going to be some stories that are less represented, some pretty rare radio. So I, I think these are going to be some very solid specials. But generally, we'll try and keep most everything else uh, that we do from materials that were before June of 1944. And if you do have recommendations regarding uh, World War II programs, very specifically, uh, when I mentioned this uh, previously, I received an email suggesting uh, the great uh, Gilderslave, which I appreciate, but there are hundreds of episodes of the great Gilderslave out there from the World War II era. Uh, If you have a specific episode, a specific program in mind that was before D-Day, I real, you know, I'd, I'd appreciate uh, any suggestions, and we'll definitely consider it for inclusion in the war. We've had several episodes that we've had in mind, but as we've gone through uh, programs, because generally when I consider, I, I put a, a program down tentatively to play, I'm going off a synopsis through the Radio Gold Index, which has descriptions of uh, what a lot of programs are. And I have found when I've gone ahead and I've listened to some programs that they really are not worth airing. I had um, one episode when I listened to it, I just thought it was kind of dull. And then there was another program I listened to which uh, really was not what I was expecting from the description. It did uh, deal with the war, but it dealt with it in such a way that it fell uh, into that unintentional comedy sort of uh, category, the so bad it's good. And that's really not the type of thing we're going for on this program. So that's going to be our big challenge. And if you have any suggestions or specific episodes, we'd love to hear from you. And I guess the final thing is that there is actually a new World War II movie that's coming out called Monument Men. And I am going to try and go and see that the first weekend it's in the theaters, and I'll uh, perhaps share some thoughts on that uh, at our next uh, mailbag. All right, well, that's all for today. Uh, We'll be back tomorrow with our comedy episode. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Uh, From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.